This is Spencer of the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Brett Gelman and Janik Sabravo. Got that right? Okay. That's uh, a beautiful pronunciation. I, I have a last name that people butcher all the time, so I have a sensitivity to names as well. Um, you guys are the creative force behind Lemon, which is playing at SIF. Is it a premiere or anything like that? Or is it's it... a Seattle premiere. Good enough. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're, we're, whatever pleasure we can get you guys at town is yes. Yeah. Um, very, very excited to be here. I wanted to start by... I seen online that this film was in some regard inspired by your guys's real life um is there any truth to that and if so what way because obviously this is an exaggeration of some sort but what kind of uh inspirations did you bring to this film i guess would be the question uh we wrote the movie we wrote the first draft of the film about five and a half years ago wow and and then it, it it's evolved significantly from from inception to the piece that I shot or that we shot last year, uh, and it's a dark comedy and it's totally absurd. Yes. And uh, but it's about this fear of failure. It's about this thing, kind of a anxiety of waking up one day and not having a sense of how you got there and not having arrived at the life that you had meant or seen for yourself. I, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's hard to imagine like anyone, like I'm in my mid thirties and even now I'm just looking back and being like, wow, how did I get here from like the my mid twenties so I can empathize? A hundred percent. And when I think the first, I was 30 and you were 35 when we wrote that first draft, right? I know, that was a while <laughs> Even ago. Even just the five years since then, you're like, how did we get here? She means uh, I was 30, too. And I was, yeah, we were both, <laughs> we're both 30. 18. Yeah, going we're going both 18 at the yeah. time, and now we're um, 18 we're, plus 5, yeah, exactly. so we're 23. 23 um, years old. Yeah. We've been Very 23 wise. for the last um, 13 years. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I think even then, I at that point, like, I was turning 30, and because we wrote it in the first draft in February or March of that year that I turned 30. And I, a lot of my friends, or actually a lot of Brett's friends were getting married. We're together. We've been mm. together for eight and a half years. And so a lot of his friends were starting to get married. And my friends were like buying homes. And then uh, there were people having children. And here we were at our first <laughs> film festival together with a short film. And I was like, uh, I'm not really sure like when we're going to get to that moment. Sure, I yeah. mean, are, are, are we supposed to be buying a house now? There was this, there's kind of an unspoken, or maybe it is spoken, uh, track of these markers you're supposed yeah, to no, hit I feel, in your I feel life. like it's pretty Is it pretty spoken? spoken? I'm yeah. like, I think. I feel like people definitely look at you a little weird <laughs> if you're like, I'm not married, or I don't have kids, or even, people like, get even worse if you're like, I don't want. Yeah. Like, that's where it gets real iffy. Yeah, I remember a, oh, no, somebody go on, go on. came up to you. and was like, she had just gotten engaged. We had been together for years, and we were like, there was never that pressure, really, uh, in terms of legal marriage, but like, don't worry, you'll, like, right? And she was like, this will happen for you One soon, don't worry. Person, there were so many people yeah. who had said that to me, because this was at around, like, five years of us being together, and, um, and funnily enough, I actually did not want to get married, and Brett did and as far as like what our uh, our thinking was going into our relationship that's where I was and a lot of women would say to me like I feel it's gonna come for you and I'm like what's coming wow. like I'm all good wow, it's like, <laughs> so yeah. and, then now, and then once we got married uh, there was this ooh, is, does he want to have kids? And I was like, well, what about me? Yeah. Well, how you don't do have I any feel? influence in that. No, yet. I'm just, um, I'm a beta. I'm completely beta in the dynamic. And uh, yeah, so I think for both of us, we were just feeling like there were these set markers and we felt pretty uh, sort of delayed. We felt kind of behind. And, um, and, and where we couldn't really like in that moment see how the course was going to take us there. And so the film became this exorcism of of where we didn't want to wake up. And you know, when the movie starts, it's like essentially waking up like in the, what yeah. feels like the yeah, worst position and, um, or what would be like our, <laughs> our big signal of maybe something's not right here. Yeah. And, um, and then the film is just that the journey of that. And it explores career, love and family and the idea of failing at all of those aspects. It's an interesting sort of note. Is, was it a cathartic process for you two to sort of go through this this film and saying like, look, you know, I, we've had all these pressures on us. I mean, I don't know if you've had successes and failures and all this other stuff. It's but cathartic it's, as, um, as like a full picture of 
what our perspective is and uh, in, in how we make things and how we live our lives. And it was it's one of the things that I, I'm very proud of about the film that it does filter through this anxiety that we both have uh, in regards to everything and and uh, not You're just very chill yeah and um, it's definitely vibrating that anxiety is vibrating through the film so it was it was really freeing to be able to take something that at many points in life feels so negative and use it to creative effect and I mean we're always doing that but you never take it for granted. Each time it feels like it's new and each time it, it's nice because you're like, oh, well, there is something good to the, yeah. <laughs> this terror that I feel yeah. as soon as I open my eyes in the morning. That it so, exists is the catharsis too. And then, yeah. And then also realizing that that anxiety is very privileged as well, you know, there's like, uh, especially an, for me. There's like, an, it's funny to hear you talk about the anxiety. There's sort of like this in, inherent sort of conflict with something like this, where it's like a personal project that you guys are working at. It almost feels like there's a cathartic element to it, but at the same time, you're almost putting more pressure on it because it's it's your project. Like you are the one who has to make this succeed. Like, is does that factor into your guys' mind as you're making this film, or is it just are you just a hundred percent? I mean, the the piece itself is again this like manifestation of what we don't want for ourselves, and then that it took five years to make it. Every start and stop was this. Well, maybe you're not actually going to get there. Like the thing that you wrote, this this tangible object, maybe it's unattainable. And uh, as far as like the journey to making it, I found myself disengaging from it. Hmm. Once, once we'd had a couple of really big rejections with getting funding, almost getting to make it, mm. it was emotionally very hard for me. I mean, it was like being in a relationship and uh, being abandoned and then showing up to it again, and I couldn't really. I mean, I was like, it was sort of at the back of well, my it's mind. It's tough, too, because like you can't turn it off to a certain degree. Like, you go home, and this is still something that is it's attached to you. There. It's not like somebody hires you for a job. Yeah. The second you leave <laughs> for the day, you're like, fuck yeah, this, I don't care exactly. about that until the next day I have to show Which up. Which I actually think, based on our dynamic, because because Brett is an actor, and actors are so good at rejection. Uh, he, uh, not because they want to be. Uh, <laughs> just the reality of the it's industry. It's just like yeah. that's the industry. I mean, there is, uh, even in success, there is a lot of no. And, and he was really great about, he was very persistent about the film and was was engaged with it in a way that I like emotionally it was kind of difficult for me where he could be in any room and like years in still be pitching that we were working <laughs> on it and I was like that's depressing I don't want to talk about this movie that we're still working on three and a half four years in that doesn't exist because I walk away and I feel embarrassed or ashamed <laughs> it's an interesting switch to flip though because once you get to the point where it's like, okay, go ahead and make that. It's almost like that much more pressure because you've been sort of like doing the cycle for years. Yeah, year. no, I'm we in pre-production. There were you know you you have these disagreements that happen, and uh, we weren't going to let uh, you know, her vision of it and our vision of it be compromised. We couldn't let that happen after five years of trying to get it made. But it's also just not how we work in general anyway. I feel like we would have been that way if we had written it and then started to make it anyway, just, like right away. Yeah. Because it's, it's, important, it's important to fight for your vision. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's one of the interesting things about this film is, as you said, it's a dark comedy. Um, it is not necessarily like, you know, the generic crowd pleaser comedy <laughs> of the year or whatever. Yeah. I, I think there's something interesting that you guys really went with your your true vision instead of just trying to be like, what can we make the most money doing or something yeah. like that? Is it, is it, I mean, I mean, this seems like a dumb question in some regards, but how challenging is it in a place like Hollywood to sort of be like, we want to do this artistic project because this is what we want to do instead of just, you know, selling out and being like, hey, let me do a wacky version of this where I <laughs> flip over a couch like Jack Trevor. Right. And like, uh, yeah. I think, you know, we both are, are attracted to pretty polarizing work. The work that we go to, the work we seek out and the work that we make. And even still knowing that, like I know that on paper, but 
to me the work feels rather like normal mm. and it's a, a funny experience or at least like you know we premiered at Sundance at the beginning of the year and then we had our international premiere the same week at Rotterdam and we went to both and wow. it wasn't really until I I had read a couple of things that had been written about the film and then I saw how people perceived it because my perception being inside feeling like oh, I'm yeah. inside of it is a different experience like the I like words like weird or strange or uh, that quirky yeah or that the like the intention isn't emotionally rooted when for both of us it's like so emotional like it's yeah. it's almost like a paint by feeling you know so I, I was like oh I guess how I feel is weird <laughs> I guess so well, I mean, it's, it's, in an essence, strange. it's kind of like having a kid. I mean, like, you think about it in a lot of ways. Yeah. Like, this is what you're putting out to the world. And, like, yeah. is our child, like, ugly and deformed? Yeah, exactly. I mean, maybe. Like, yeah. I mean, it's, it's sort of like to have that judgment towards it. It's kind of, it maybe seems our like it would like hurt. A, our head, the head's a little bit too uh, uh, large. It's one of those kids that needs, like, a helmet at the very beginning. <laughs> but it's going to be, like, a but great still, head yeah, later. But, enough, like, at yeah. the beginning, it yeah. needs a helmet. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I think that. Well, we just don't know how to make those, like, we don't know how to make things that we don't have to make. And so this is the form in which it takes. And, yeah, in terms of making something that is going to make a lot of money, it's like it still might not make a lot of money, even if you play by the, like, oh, math yeah. problem of putting that together. So you might as well make exactly what you want to make anyway. And yeah, exa I was just thinking about you know, how we both felt like, what if we never get to do this again? And so we want the final piece to be something that if it's the only time we get to do this, it's at least as close to exactly what we meant as possible. Yeah, we were definitely the minotaurs in the labyrinth of the making of this film, protecting it, you know, not... Uh, yeah, being very protective of it. I mean, we still are. And I think you have to be. And I think that Hollywood is an interesting place, especially right now, because I think that there is a hunger for something different. Oh, yeah. And I think that uh, the response that we've seen, yeah, and I think that, that all of that, that creativity that started to boom in television is starting to come into filmmaking more again. Um, yeah. Because after the recession, that sort of died down. And this whole micro budget way of making films oh yeah jason Blum. every yeah uh you know a lot of people though thought like oh, i can do it like a lot of people just thought that they can do it and maybe they can but you shouldn't ever have that thought <laughs> you know <laughs> you should have the thought i have to do this and i hope it goes well and and so i feel like people are hungry for something like this film and hungry for other films that are um, you know, striking out on their own well, creatively. I mean, there's, a, there's an interesting sort of, I don't know, like you're, I, I completely agree with you, but it also is a challenge that you guys exist in a system of like, oh, this is, you know, a dark comedy. Like you even, like even have to like really clearly categorize it or else people like, because I mean, I, I mean, is it a dark comedy? Yes. I don't know if that is like necessarily the best way to describe it per se, but I, like everything has to be categorized <laughs> as something. And so it's like, yeah. how do you sell something that's unique, but at the same time sort of prepare people to not be like, oh, this isn't what I think of as a dark comedy or something like that. And we've definitely heard that, you know, because it's not, it's not funny enough or it's too bleak or maybe it's a drama with overtones of humor. <laughs> or it's too funny. <laughs> you know, we always thought Wait, that... someone has said our movie's too funny. No one has said our film is too funny. Some people thought it was like, well, at one point, though... You mean in reading it? In reading it, yeah. they were like, this is a... I was like, no one watched The reactions like to the film are, are very different, are very yeah, different. I, I mean, some people... Uh, we've had people who are in mainstream pockets of the industry describe our film as completely hilarious. Which is cool. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. not something that uh, that that you you know you 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 take for granted at all. I mean, yeah, we want we want people to experience the work and however they want to experience it. But That's, I think that the best wording for it is I would call it theater of the absurd. I think it's theater of the absurd. We were like, we should have just said it was a drama. 
Well, there, there's this weird we thing. just said it was a drama because the humor would be like a nice surprise. And then the dark elements of it, people would be like, oh, well, I'm into it. He's like such a tragic but I think figure. The problem with that is, as you know, like when you go into, um, and these are not particularly funny filmmakers, but like if you watch like a Lars von Trier movie and there is, uh, like in Nymphomaniac, there's that incredible monologue by Uma Thurman. It's like 10 minutes long. And um, she's walked into the, apartment of the woman that her husband is cheating on her with with her two children and it's really funny I mean it's absurd yeah. and I remember being in an audience where we we're the only two people laughing so hard because it was so insane it was like it was just it was like the the ex, the thing that film can do that's just really exciting which is that like it does not have to mirror life it can be like life just to kind of like the left you know it's like ridiculous and big and like existing in this hyper reality um and but when you label things i feel drama sometimes your audience feels there's a way that there's like a certain behavior similarly oh, yeah. with when you label the word comedy i think people feel if anyone walks away from the movie disappointed which we were in maryland last week and this lady was like very upset after the film and she was like it just wasn't very funny and, um, and i thought I, and I understood that, and she was upset, and I understood it in like our exchange because I, you know, you buy the ticket and you want a certain amount of laughs and you want to feel safe, and I, and I knew that what she meant was I didn't feel safe, and I was like, it's but it's okay to not feel safe, but you're not okay with it, and I get that. Well, that's that. the fear of risk. There's <laughs> like this inherent fear of risk that people like I need to know exactly what, I'm, and that's why like there's five Transformers and there's five, you know, I mean, thank God. The I'm so happy there's so many yeah, of those. Yeah, I mean, it's no doubt. But like, <laughs> I've, I've gotten into this place where I almost don't want to know anything going into a movie. That way I just take it cold and sort of experience it as I do, not with yeah. sort of preconceived notions. A hundred percent, that's almost yeah. impossible to do now. So. Yes. Um, so the film is Lemon. It's playing here at CSF. Um, <laughs> what is the best way for people to keep up to date on it? Where you know, where they can see it or whatever. Is there a website, Twitter, anything you guys want them to pay attention to? Is there? Yeah, it has a Facebook page, okay, Facebook? which we need to which start really getting to, on. So I and think it's getting good to recommend that people go there. Theoretically, you know, the Facebook page that, might This be is up motivating there. us to get more serious about yeah. the Facebook page. But also there's... Um, our Instagrams. W well, yeah, but there's a... Uh, we together have an Instagram that's called Cirque Works, mm. which is S-Y-R-K Works, which is like Circus Works. Mm -hmm. Cirque is Circus in Polish. Um, mm. Should I keep talking about that for a long time? Interesting. Um, and uh, and then and that <laughs> is where we like... post our work stuff. Um, and by we, I mean we just started like yesterday. <laughs> and uh, and then Magnolia oh, wow. uh, purchased our film and Fantastic. they are distributing it. Yeah, so great. it will be out uh, in August. I'm not allowed yes. to say the date just yet. Because it We're hasn't not, been properly. Oh right. It has not been stated as such. In, but August, in August, stay tuned for it. it yes, Check the, and yes. we'll be on, on iTunes as well as in theaters. Fantastic. And yeah, and you can check out Janixa, her Instagram, or Brett Gelman, my Instagram. We're always that's posting the only social media it. we engage with. Seems Twitter, to be the smart way to go. I used to be on Twitter, and then I had to get off. Toxic. It's so toxic, Twitter. It's it's all a gamble. It's Facebook, like a, it's Instagram, a troll Twitter, hole. But, yeah. Troll hole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for thank doing you. this. Thank I you. Wish you the best yeah. of You're awesome. Lemon and people check it out and yes. uh, challenge yourself for once. Thank, thank you, you so Spencer. much. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's don't even try to buy the same style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels